Hello, my name is Elias Muau, and today I will take you through optimization, the one variable case. So this is uh, session one where I will just introduce optimization for a one independent variable case, and then later on we'll look at some work examples. So there are some uh, expectations that I've put here. So at the end of this uh, entire uh, you know session on uh, optimization, you are expected to use the first order derivatives to find the stationary points of a function. Meaning that for any given function that you face in the future, you should be able to use the first order derivative to you know find those stationary points. And the use of this first order derivative is what we call the first order condition. So you need to use the first order condition to find your stationary points. Then we, after this, you are also expected to know how to use the second order condition. So you will therefore be able to use the second order derivative to classify the stationary points of a function. Now, in classifying these stationary points, you are trying to indicate whether a given stationary point is a maximum or a minimum or a point of inflection. And after classifying these stationary points, you also acquire some skills in sketching the economic functions. So with all this, let's go through the introduction to optimization for a one variable case. All right, so here, as earlier mentioned, we are dealing with one independent variable, meaning that for a given function, let's say a, fun a, a y function, it will be a function of x. So we we'll only have x as the only independent variable, and we want to see how that x is influencing y. So with x being the only independent variable, we want to you know, determine the stationary points of any given function and be able to sketch that function. So we need to optimize any given function by first finding the stationary points. Now remember these stationary points are points of rest, the point where the slope of a function is equal to zero. Okay, so once we find these stationary points, we will later on be able to categorize each of these. Okay. So stationary points may be called uh, critical points, or we can also call them the turning points or the extrema. So any of these names can be used to refer to stationary points. So depending on which book you are using or studying, ensure that you understand that these will simply relate or refer to uh, as stationary points. So at the turning point, I mentioned earlier, the slope of a given function is zero, meaning that if you draw a tangent on uh, any stationary point, the tangent will be horizontal. And as you find the slope of a horizontal line, the slope will be zero. So take note, what we will call as a stationary point is a point of rest. When you are moving either up a hill or down, you will reach a point of rest. That point of rest is what we will refer to as a stationary point. So let's consider a function f of x. With this function then, we said that the slope of a function will be zero at the stationary point. If you get the first derivative of the function f with respect to x, that derivative will equal zero. You can also use this notation here for first derivative f uh, prime x. So this means you're getting the first derivative. At the stationary point, the first derivative will be zero. So once you equate the first derivative to zero, first order derivative to zero, what you are getting is a stationary point. And this is what we refer to as the first order condition. Equating the first order derivative to zero is called the first order condition for optimization. All right, so the stationary points will be classified into any of the three. 
So once you determine your stationary points, it's either you will find it to be a local maximum or a local minimum or an inflection point. Now, I'll explain later on the next slide why we are emphasizing the use of the word local. So as we have classified our stationary points as either a local maximum, a local minimum, or a point of inflection, we are using the word local. We want to emphasize that when you are using the word local, it means that a given maximum or a given minimum point may not be the only minimum or maximum point in the distribution. There could be other points that may appear to be max or minimum. Take an example. We are looking at this function here sketched. We can see that this function has about three minimum points. There is a minimum here. There is another minimum here and another minimum here. So we can see that this is not the minimum of all these. But there is some minimum point which in this case appears to be this point here. If you extend your graph, we don't know how it will look later on. Maybe it can have another minimum. But from what we are showing here, these are minimum points, but not the global minimum. So we will just refer to them as local minimums. And then the one that is minimum, the least of all, is what we can term the global minimum. The same applies with the maximum points. So this is the local maximum or the global maximum because in what uh, we are seeing here, it appears to be the highest of all. So we will call it the global maximum or simply the local maximum because there are other maximums available within this you know, uh, neighborhood. All right, let's go through uh, the step-by-step -step process of finding the uh, stationary points as well as classifying those stationary points. So given a function f of x, the first thing we need to do is to find the first order a derivative of a given function. You need to differentiate the function f of x with respect to x. Okay, so once you do that, then you find the first order condition. First order condition requires that you equate the first order derivative to zero. So once you equate your first order derivative to zero, you will be able to find the stationary point, the value of x at that stationary point. And once you plug that value of x back into the function, you will also be able to observe the value that f of x takes at that given stationary point. Once you find your uh, first order condition, then you need to get the second order derivative of that function, which means you need to differentiate the, uh, uh, the function f of x twice or differentiate the first derivative. So we are getting f prime prime x, which is the second, deri uh, second order derivative of the function. From here, you need to get the first, uh, the second order condition. So with the second order condition, you are now determining the nature of the stationary point. And to do that, we use the following. If uh, the second order derivative of a function evaluated at a stationary point A is greater than zero, then the function f of x has a minimum at that stationary point. Take note, I'm emphasizing the use of uh, the, uh, the uh, second order condition here because this is where we will be able to determine whether the function has a maximum, a minimum, or an inflection point. So if that second order derivative evaluated at some value A, which you found as the X value on the stationary point, if you evaluate your second derivative of that value of X, and you find that it is greater than zero, then it means f of x is a local minimum or has a minimum at that point. If the second order derivative of a function evaluated that the stationary point A is less than zero, then the function has a maximum point. And if the second order derivative evaluated at the stationary point is equal to zero, 
then the function is an inflection point at that stationary point. So we end here for the introduction. In my next session, I will take you through uh, the work example. So for more details, you can uh, send an email to muwaoelias at gmail.com or send a WhatsApp message to the number showing on your screen. I'll see you in session two where we will look at uh, uh, a work example.